In the beginning of our animal unit, we're first going to look at classification. Classification. All things are classified into groups based on the traits that they share. We call this taxonomy, or the study of classification. The largest groups into which the scientists study or divide the groups is called kingdoms. The five kingdoms are the Monarans, bacteria and viruses, the protists, which are the amoebas, fungi, plants, and animals. And it would be very important for you to know these. And there's a trick to remember them. And if you look right here, you'll see the trick. And it's most people find plants attractive. Most for Monarans, people, protist, find fungi, plants, plants, attractive for animals. So most people find plants attractive is the trick and that helps you remember the five kingdoms, the Monarans, the protists, the fungi, plants and animals. And the next uh, slide that we're going to talk about is just the common characteristics. Number one, there are 35 phyla or phyla, like when you're talking about the phylum, more than one phylum is a phyla. Uh, these phyla can be classified into two groups. So there's vertebrates, those that have a backbone, and invertebrates, those that do not have a backbone, based on external and internal physical characteristics. All animals share several, several common characteristics. Number one, their bodies are multicellular. Number two, they're heterotrophs. Number three, their major functions are to obtain food, oxygen, for, to breathe for energy, and to keep their internal conditions in balance, which means maintain a body temperature, move, and reproduce. So they're multicellular, more than one cell. They are heterotrophs, which means that they have to go get their own food. Remember, hunter, gatherer, predator, prey. I'm going to food line to get my food today. That's the heterotrophs chant. And you can find that on the Weebly. Their major functions are they need to go get food, obtain food and oxygen to breathe for energy. They need to keep their internal conditions in balance. That means they need to maintain their body temperature. They need to move so that they can get the food and they need to reproduce. Vertebrates. Vertebrates are comprised of one phylum of animals. Vertebrates share certain physical characteristics. Number one, they have a backbone, an internal skeleton called an endoskeleton. Endo means inside. Skeleton means bones, inside bones and muscles. They have blood that circulates through blood vessels and lungs or gills for breathing. They have protective skin covering like you and I do. Most have legs, wings, or fins to move, and they have a nervous system with a brain that processes information from their environment through sensory organs. Fish is the first example of vertebrates, and fish are cold-blooded. That means that they get their heat from outside of their body. They are ect that means ectothermic. They obtain dissolved oxygen and water through their gills. Most of them lay eggs. They have scales, fins, and live in water. A lot of the times students forget that fish are vertebrates, but if you go to a restaurant and you order a whole fish, you've got to pick the meat off the bone, therefore they have bones. These are just examples of other fish, the lamprey, catfish, sea ray, white shark, all of these are either uh, non-cartilaginous fish or cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous, excuse me. Uh, then these are other fish, the seahorse. This is called a hagfish. That's the lamprey eating uh, a fish. And this is actually what uh, a lamprey's mouth looks like. Amphibians is the next group. Amphibians are cold-blooded. They get their heat from the outside. Ectothermic means outside heat. Most can breathe in water with gills as they're young. And when they get older, they breathe with uh, lungs as adults on land. So they can live in the water and in land. They go through metamorphosis. 
which means that they change. Uh, they change from like a tadpole to a frog. They lay jelly-like eggs in the water, by the water, underwater. Uh, the major groups of amphibians are frogs, toads, and salamanders. Frogs and salamanders have smooth, moist skin through which that they can breathe and live part of their life in water and part on the land. But toads have thicker, bumpy skin and they live on the land, but all of them are considered amphibians. These are just a couple different amphibians. The spotted salamander, the poison dart frog, the fire-bellied toad, and I think this one is the Sicilian, but I can't exactly read it. Reptiles are cold-blooded, ectothermic, ecto, outside, thermic, heat, therefore outside heat means cold-blooded. They breathe with lungs, most of them lay eggs, but some of the eggs hatch inside the female, and they have scales or plates. Their eggs are also leathery. They feel real leathery-like. And remember, amphibians, they laid soft eggs, soft jelly-like eggs, but the reptiles lay leathery-like eggs. And these are just a couple different uh, reptiles, a coral snake, this is a turtle, a tortoise, and a tutara. Birds. Birds are warm-blooded. So, so far, we've talked only about the ectothermic animals. Those were cold-blooded. They get their heat from the outside. Ecto means outside or outer. Therm means heat. But now we're talking about birds. Birds are endothermic. Endo means inside. It's a word part meaning inside. So thermic means heat. So inside heat means warm-blooded. They breathe with lungs. They lay eggs. They have feathers and they have a beak with two wings and two feet. And that's their common characteristics. Different birds, the purple finch, a stork, a red-tailed hawk, and an emu. Remember, not every single bird can fly. Most of them do, and they have lightweight bones, hollow bones, in order to make flight easier. We don't have hollow, hollow bones. Our bones are very, very, very heavy. Even if a person lost all their body weight in muscle and their fat, their bones would still be very, very heavy. That's why so, when someone says he's nothing but skin and bones, those bones can still weigh up to 60, 70 pounds, even if a person has starved almost to death. And then the last endothermic, so so far there was birds and now mammals. Those are the only two warm-blooded animals that we will study. So they're the two exceptions. Everything else is ectothermic. Everything else gets its heat from the outside. But mammals and birds are warm-blooded. They're endothermic. Endo means inside heat. They breathe with lungs. Most of them have babies that are born alive. They have fur or hair. They produce milk to feed their young. They do not have backbone or, excuse me, and they feed their young. And I thought that there was going to be a couple other pictures, but basically then you would just see uh, there's a bat, a monkey, orangutan, uh, a little fox. And the next slide is talking about invertebrates. Invertebrates are the others. So there's vertebrates and invertebrates. Invertebrates, there are way more invertebrates than there are vertebrates. There are 95% almost of invertebrates as comp compared to vertebrates. There's 3 to 5% vertebrates in the world and about 95% invertebrates in the world. So they do not have a backbone or an internal skeleton. Some have external skeletons called exoskeletons. Exo means outer, just like exit means to go outside, to exit, to remove yourself. Um, examples of invertebrates would be that you would have to know are sponges, segmented worms like an earthworm, echinoderms, mollusk, and arthropods. And we're going to go into major detail with these. Invertebrates 
the first invertebrate that we're going to study is a sponge. Sponges are very simple animals that have a whole bunch of pores where water goes in and out of one main central cavity. So the water is going to flow through the pores, but it's going to move into a central cavity and out through a hole in the top. Sponges get their food and, eliminates, and el eliminate waste right through that same passage of water. So the wa it goes in and out the same hole. They have special cells to obtain food and oxygen from the water that they take in. So that was the first invertebrate. The next invertebrate is a segmented worm. And any boy or girl who has ever fished with their mom or dad has seen a segmented worm, an earthworm. They have long tube-like bodies. They're divided into little segments. They're the simplest organism that still has a true nervous system and blood contained in vessels. They have a long digestive tube that runs down the length of the worm's inner body and worms take in oxygen that's dissolved from the water uh, around them through their skin. So they can also dissolve oxygen from the within the soil that they're living in. Examples of segmented worms might be an earthworm or a leech. I don't know if you've ever had a leech on you, but they'll suck your blood. Just saying. Uh, echinoderms have arms that extend from the middle of the body out Children love these. They're amazing looking. They're beautiful. They have great color. They have tubed feet that take in oxygen from the water and their spines. Examples would be like a sea star. A lot of kids call those starfish, but it's actually called a sea star, brittle stars, sea cucumbers, or sea urchins. And there are pictures of them right here. Next are mollusks. Every kid knows what a mollusk is. They just don't maybe call it a mollusk. A snail is a mollusk. Um, clams, octopus, slugs, all of these are considered a mollusk. They have a really soft body, but they have this big, thick, muscular foot that allows it to move or to open and close its shell. So it needs this, it has this really, really strong muscle, and the muscle is cons considered a muscular foot. They have more developed body system than a sponge does, or even a worm does. They take in oxygen through gills or lungs, and some of them even have shells. And the next invertebrate is an arthropod. And this seems like to be one of the ones that kids are most fascinated by because there's so many different types of them. Arthropods have jointed legs, segmented bodies, and some have wings. Um, they have an outer covering they call an exoskeleton. They obtain oxygen from the air through gills or air tubes. Some might be insects, arachnids, of course that would be any type of spider, uh, mite, and crustaceans. Crustaceans would be any of the um, types of things like the crawfish that we have in the classroom and then of course we have the grasshopper and things like that. And I always tell my students that any type of invertebrate, if you stepped on an invertebrate, First you would hear a crunch and then you'd see a squish. But if you stepped on a human or a mammal or some type of vertebrate, first you would hear the squish and then you would hear the crunch. It's kind of like the exoskeleton is so hard on arthropods or on um, any type of invertebrate that has an outer s skeleton or an exoskeleton, you would hear that crack first. And these are the three different types of arthropods, insects, arachnids, and crustaceans. So Mrs. Leslie a couple years ago called them the CIA. So the arthropods are in the CIA. They're undercover and they're in the CIA. Crustaceans, insects, arachnids. But each of them differ because an insect per se has three body segments. An arachnid only has two. Crustaceans, almost all of them have two body segments. An insect has three pair of legs. Arachnids have four pair of legs, like a spider. Yuck. And crustaceans mostly have five pair of legs. 
Insects have one pair of antennae, little antenna on top of their head. Arachnids don't have any antennae at all. Crustaceans have two pair of antennae. Insects live on land. Arachnids, almost all of them live on land. But crustaceans, most of them live in water. The examples of insects are beetles, bees, wasps, ants, butterflies. That's just a couple of them. Arachnids, spiders, mites, scorpions, boys always seem to really love those, and ticks. Unfortunately, if your animal gets a tick bite, it could get Lyme's disease from that, and so could humans. So stay away from the forest so that you don't get these on your body. Uh, crustaceans, shrimp, crab, lobster, barnacles, pill bugs. Three of them you want to go to Red Lobster to eat, and two, if they served it on my plate, I'd die. I'd just be disgusted. So you want to get shrimp, crab, and Red Lobster. So remember, we eat crustaceans. Just think of crust as food, and I would eat crust, shrimp, crab, lobster. All right, uh, these are just a couple of really cool crustaceans. Uh, this is actually a real crustacean. It's humongous, and kids always like that picture. These are the insects. Remember, CIA, crustaceans, insects, and the arachnids. And they always give me the creeps, the arachnids. And then that's uh, the next visit. And so we're going to end it right there. We hope that you've learned a lot about invertebrates and vertebrate animals. Don't forget to check out the hints and tricks and tips. There's another uh, vertebrate and invertebrate video lesson to review this information. And we hope that you enjoyed it. Remember, you can watch any of these things at home. Get yourself more on track. Thanks.